Right, so now I have to tear this out. So now uh, the shocks I'm not going to be using, and I'm not going to be using these links, and I'm not going to be using the rear bumper. So at this point, I'm just going to, have to disassemble uh, these components. Uh, I'm going to start with the shocks. Shocks, uh, it's just four screws, and I will not be using them. Uh, so I can just remove the shock tower. So I would be replacing the screws with new ones. And uh, I can just leave the shocks attached to the bottom because I will be replacing the arms with RPM arms. Now the kit that I'm going to be installing, this is a T-Max. It also fits the E-Max True Track Rear Arm Conversion Kit. So what it does is it gets rid of the links in the back. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about adjusting the toe. And the other thing too, when your suspension compresses, uh, you're not going to get a steering difference because there's a difference in the length between the fulcrum here and here and the fulcrum here and this point here. So because you have that different height, uh, when your suspension compresses, it will move these either in or out. So as your suspension is compressing, your rear tires are actually uh, shifting. So they're not going straight up and down this way. They're actually moving in and out. So your toe is constantly changing, and that's the problem. Now the shock tire, once you remove it, if you forget which direction it goes, just remember that this little hole here, this goes toward the rear. Uh, that's where the easy start uh, harness would attach to, which again, I'm not going to be using the easy start harness. Uh, I'm just going to use a glow plug starter and uh, a battery. So I will be wiring that later on. And to make it easier, I will be using a Traxxas connector. I just need a switch. So I have to dig through my parts, find a switch. I mean, I have a ton of parts. I just have to dig through them. Bags, boxes. Uh, here we go. All right. So there's a shock mount. Uh, that is going to attach to the bulkhead, but the differential has to go in the bulkhead first before I can attach that, which I guess I could do that now. Uh, but I'm not going to just yet. Uh, at this point, what I want to do is I want to remove the arms and just separate uh, these here. And I'm going to start with the lower arms. <clears throat> so there's one pin. That pin looks good. And just remember that the lower pins are the shorter pins. Uh, once you go into reinstalling, you, you would figure that out. And I'm going to tell you right now, just by looking at this kit, the RPM kit looks massive compared to the stock Traxxas kit. Uh, so we will see. How it fits. Hopefully it fits well with the GTR shocks I plan on installing or else that's going to be another issue. I mean I'm just spinning it so that I can remove it. There we go. All right so we have these two. They both look fine and I will be needing to remove the bumper it appears uh, to access that screw. So I'm only going to loosen the top and remove the lower. So that's the lower bumper. I'm just going to flip this over. There's 
is another one which we can flip. I will have to remove the parts in here for the RPM, uh, but I will do that afterwards. I will actually start installing the RPM components first. Just check the pins, making sure they're straight. I do have a replacement ones. It's not a big deal. Just gonna try to use it's easier if you twist. I'm just trying to hold the pin and push it up with my thumb as I pretend to back out the screw with the driver. I'm actually just spinning it so that it helps me remove it. And there we go. All right, now I just need to remove these two screws. I will put these off to the side because I should not need them with this new kit. So I can use it to mount something later on, or just throw them away. I mean, they're they are Phillips screws anyway. One more. Is. All right. There's one side, here's the other side, and here we have this. So now I'm just going to take this brush and I'm trying to brush some of that off. And there we go. Uh, so this is set. Uh, I'm not finished with these yet, uh, but I am going to begin installing the RPM kit. Uh, so this here, this is number 80942, and there's too much light from the window. Let's see if I can block some of it. Uh, doesn't seem like I can, but this is the kit that you're looking for. So 80942, and this is the conversion kit. Alright, so you get a pair of lower arms, a pair of top arms, you get your hubs, your hub carriers, I should say. Instructions, a sticker, and a bag with more hardware. Oh, fun. Eclipse. Why? Oh, fun. Uh, well, let's see. Bag. Let me just make some room over here. So this is hardware I will not be using. It's just taking up table space. And we do get uh, new bearings. So I'm going to be using the new bearings. Uh, and oh, actually, I may not have to remove the other stuff. Let's see. All right, comes with the retainers. And those are the pins. Don't think I'll use those pins if I can use the the other screws. Uh, these are the new bearings. And more new bearings. Alright, so I do have to remove some hardware from the other. 
and I get these pings. And these pings are going to be for these. And uh, I'll use a clicker. Okay. I was hoping uh, they were the same size as the slash pins because I have a bunch of those and they look to be a similar length and I could just replace them and throw them on. These are much thicker. Uh, so I do have all the Eclipse. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so you get two extra ones. Uh, so you get two spares. All right, good. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the hub. Uh, and you get actually the small bearings go on the outside. This will just go on the outside and press in. And you will get the larger one, and that will go on the inside. Once it's set properly, uh, do the other one. That was easy. Let's see this one here. That works. All right. Uh, I may use a driver. Now, let me go ahead and disassemble one of these and I can compare the arms. Uh, so I'm going to use my Allen wrench and then I'm just going to back this out. Are these the same size? Uh, they appear to be the same size. I'm going to replace them. I'm going to have new hardware. Why not? This will come out. And now I'm going to need my 2.5 driver. And it is, you need your 2.5 driver. I'm just going to unscrew that uh, little ball joint in there. And then it'll simply slide out. So these I'm going to reuse, and these look good, they feel good, so I will be reusing them. I'm just going to clean them up just a little, and I'll apply a little bit of grease. Uh, there's one of the joints. I'm just going to have to loosen those, I'm assuming. Let's move that one out. Okay. I believe this one only takes one. That's fine. Uh, all right, good. So this will come out. That pin will come out. Uh, I believe there's a shin in there. No, there is no shin. There is a shin. All right, let's take the shin. And the easiest thing will be to just assemble one side first. Uh, all right, uh, I will not be removing the bottom one, but the bottom one will be the same process, even though I already took that out. Uh, but at this point, I want to go ahead and compare the arm. So this is the lower arm. This is massive. Uh, I mean, this is the RPM conversion. This is the stock. Uh, it's just a massive difference between the two. The amount of material, the design on the arm. Uh, for the shocks, you get uh, three positions instead of two. Not that it really matters. It might make a difference depending on what you're running. It just gives you a little more adjustability. Now, is it good adjustability? That's a good question. Uh, and then for the top arm, I mean, this is a very large difference. Just the thickness here, the, the width of the inside material Actually, these might be better. I think I'm going to have more space for the shocks. Uh, but we'll see. We don't know yet. Uh, so trying not to get too too excited yet. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, this is, so there is a left and a right. Uh, so this would be your right arm. This would be your left arm. So it would be built this way. And I'm going to put this off to the side. If I need parts, I'll grab it. And let's see, what about these? Is there a right and a left? I do not believe so. Well, top or bottom? Well, it says RPM on both sides. I shall install them this way. Uh, all right. Let's grab the bulkhead, see if everything fits. Usually there's some material that needs to be removed uh, when you install RPM parts, and wouldn't you know, nothing has changed. That's one thing I do find annoying about RPM. Uh, you always have to trim, trim parts. Uh, wrong arm. I don't know why we can't just make something that's precise. Uh, all right, so I'm going to remove it off the rear arms and I'm going to remove the material, some material from the outer portion. And then if I have to, I'll remove some material from the inner portion. So let me go ahead and take these and uh, I'm going to use a knife if it's easy. If not, I'm just going to use a file and I'm going to start filing. So it's, it's not really that difficult using a knife, as you can see. I'm just removing a little bit of material. I'm going to try this one out. Try to do it as even as possible, and then I'm going to fit this in, and that works. All right, let's do it to the other one. So this is, well, this was the right arm. This is the left arm. So I'm going to remove it off the same side, and all I did is I just started my blade here and started my cut, and then just started removing that material. Uh, be careful not to cut yourself. If you're a kid, have an adult do this, uh, or just use a file. File works. And not a computer file. That one will not work. All right. The other one will be easy. And I'm actually going slow. I could try to cut this faster, but there's no point in rushing it. I'm using a sharp object. Uh, let's see, is it this pin? Oh, this one doesn't go here. That's why. That makes sense. All right. Go there. Uh, all right. So, let's see. enough. All right, those work. Uh, top ones. Really. Oh, this one's not going to work. Oh, we'll lose the bumper. All right, that seems to work. Yeah, good enough. Uh, if not, you would just do the same thing to everything. All right, good. So at this point, I can start assembling. So I'm just going to shift the bumper up. I'm going to put this arm right in here. And I'm going to drive one of the long pins in there. And here it is. So now I'm just going to screw this one in. That and uh, now I'm going to do the short pins. Now, one little thing here uh, I am installing this, but you may want to run a reamer through it, and that will be my recommendation. 
Because this may be... Maybe it's fine. But it may be a little too tight around the hinge pins. You can also use a round file. That works as well. But that is something to consider. If you were planning on replacing your bulkheads with RPM, this would have been the time to do it. But I'm not going to. Not the rear anyway. The front I replaced because the originals were broken. So that's the reason why. All right, at this point I can go ahead and install this. And I might as well place the differential in the correct spot. It's one of the lower screws. There it is. Let's go to the other side. So the top ones, for example, now that the bumper's on, do seem like they need shimming. So you want these to kind of drop. Uh, but I'm not worried about them right now. It's fine. They will work. And the bottom ones are working fine. So it's not a big deal. For this point, just for time's sake, I'm going to leave them. But uh, you would want to uh, ream them just a bit. All right, good. So now I'm going to take this uh, little ball joint, I'm going to drive it in. And for this one, I'm going to need my 2.5 millimeter driver. And I will be needing the other one from the other arm. So I will have to take the other one apart. And right now, I'm not sure how many tow this will give, but I'm just going to drive this enough to where I cannot see the threads, uh, just so everything's threaded. It's fine. Something else that you want to do is back it back out. And that's because as you're going in, you're cutting the plastic. Uh, just in case there's some excess plastic, remove it. And you can thread it back in. And here, I don't think that's it. Nope, there's an issue. All right. Well, let's throw it back in. There we go. So on the other side, I'm just going to drive it. Good stuff. All right, now uh, I'm going to go ahead and install one of these. Now these look identical. Uh, there is no left and right, so it will not matter which one goes which side. And as you can see, I made a mistake. This goes over here. I got uh, so excited threading the arm. I made a mistake, which is fine, because this will allow me to apply some grease. Afterwards. All right, let's go ahead and take this. And this is another component I will suggest reaming. But for now, it'll be good enough. The only reason is so this moves freely. That's really the only reason why. But it could wear in. So let's see. Uh, for Eclipse, always line it up, see where the groove is, so that you can set the E-clip right on top of the arm. You want to be able to set the E-clip there. The reason why is then you can just grab your pliers, whatever pliers you're using, and you can just press it in. 
Uh, it makes it a lot easier if you do it this way. Let me use these pliers so you can see. So it just goes in like that. Then once you're working on the other side, just push the pin down so that that is lined up for the same reason. Then you can just place the E-clip on the arm. Oops, I'm gonna count it six and I'm only seeing five E-clips. Maybe I need to learn how to count the potato again. There we go. All right, and that is it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and, and grease this up. Now, like I said, I'm just uh, threading this on just so I don't see the threads, and that's going to be my starting point, and that's going to be way too much torque, but it's fine. Once everything's assembled, I'll figure it out. Well, maybe not. Uh, I won't know until everything's fully assembled. So these I will not be using. Uh, I will be using the new ones. Uh, so these little cups, they will go in like this. Uh, see a little groove that is supposed to sit right in there. And now I'm just going to go ahead and apply some grease here to the outside. Well, the inside, I apologize. And this will just sit in here. And use the Allen wrench. Just use your Allen wrench to thread this on. Go left first. I want to cross the little cups. this to be tight enough to where it's not uh, doing that, but I don't want it too tight to where I can't get this uh, to move freely. And now my Allen wrench is stuck. Cross. There we go. Oops, I'm going to use the ball side. All right, I'm going to use the other side. That is interesting to me. Because the distance between here and here is different than here and there. But that's the way it is. Uh, now, <clears throat> one of the things that you are going to have to remember is the following. Uh, I'm going to back this out. I just want to seat it here because this has to be able to drop so that I can put my shafts in there. So my shafts are next on this other side. So at this point, now that I have the correct, uh, I guess, tightness or correct fit, uh, I can go ahead and remove this. And you don't have to do this on the arm. You really don't. Uh, I just find it easier. Uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and do this other part now.
but just remember that there's a little group here, that's where you put the pen group. Oops, wrong group. I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna move this in there. And might as well just place the shim. Oops. Yeah. And I can slide the pin. seem to have the pin fit. Okay. So what if I use the other driver? Looks like this helps me pull this. Press the bearings in, so the bearings are pressed correctly. This is not going in. Maybe I have to press the bearings again or remove the shim. It is possible. Do I do this now? Oh. Yeah, that's it. That's the way. Too far. Now the hex. Spinning freely. So that works. And now we'll place this and this is almost complete on the left side. And again, I'm not threaded until I cannot see the threads. And there, there is one side. All right, so. We're just going to continue on the other side, but in order to do the other side, we will have to remove uh, that top component. So first, let's go ahead and remove what is it? the arm. There is the arm removed. Now we get to remove this here. And it comes up in that little plastic cup. Check the ball feels smooth. Just need to clean that. And we'll go ahead and place that in there. And we remove the hex, the pin, and the shaft. And that's what we will be needing from this side. All right, now we just need to clean this. Keep just wiping it clean, that's all I'm doing. Leave it there. And so we do the same exact thing. 